Good morning on this third Sunday of Easter at St. Mary's. It's a great joy that we're able to celebrate together, even as we are separated. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, in today's Gospel, two disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. As we prepare to draw close to Jesus in this celebration, may this water remind us of the waters of baptism as they cleanse and restore us. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us we recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water. May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. 
Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers and sisters, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during this time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looked downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women in our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. 
And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. This is one of the first church songs that I learned as a boy in Sunday school. It might also be one of your first hymns that you learned. And what's not to love about it? It draws you in. It's simple. It's repetitive. It's got a catchy tune. And as for those who remember American Bandstand, we would give it a 97 because it's easy to sing and dance to. But most importantly, it has a message that stays with you long after you stopped singing it. Because it's a message of hope. It's a message of one that can come out even from tragedy. This message is one of seeing with Easter eyes where we begin to see the world as Jesus sees it. And this message is one of hearing all that the Lord wants us to hear and then learn so we can then go back to our true mission and spread the gospel that Jesus Christ is risen, that we have not been orphaned, that we have not been left alone. So this Easter message of joy surprises us because this message of light comes out of very dark realities. Our Savior has been crucified. Our hopes have been dashed. And so we head back to the normal that we know, back into old habits, back into old preoccupations. But Jesus walks with these disciples as he walks with us, opening ears and minds to the promise that was given to us throughout Scripture. Jesus dines then with his, these disciples, opening their eyes to recognizing him in the breaking of the bread, just like he gives us at every Eucharist, a giving of self, an act of love. And so we hear in our scriptures that our Messiah continues to be with us on journeys to feed us and give us strength when the journey looks dark, when the journey looks hopeless. All so he can help us to get back on that right path of living, living out our vocations, of being messengers of that Easter joy. At Christmas time, I received a new biography as a gift on the great inventor Thomas Edison. In reading about his life, I recognized the many gifts that he had. And I was struck by how he used his gifts and the inventions that he made all to make his world a better place. Inventions that are still with us today as part of our existence. But it was not always easy for him. For every successful attempt at invention came out of many defeats and failures, of many previous attempts. But with perseverance, with multiple failures, eventually out of darkness came a great light. But in December of 1914, his life went up in flames. He was 67 years old, and his laboratory was destroyed by fire. Most of his work went up in flames, and so as the fire was still being fought, his family searched for him, 
and they found him at a distance, sitting on a rock, looking very calm as he watched his life go up in flames before him. His family, thinking that he would be devastated, instead, when they asked him what he was thinking, he said, there is great value in disaster. All of our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. Three weeks after that great fire, Thomas Edison invented his first phonograph. So on this thir third Sunday of Easter, we too can say, thank God we can start anew. Out of tragedy can come opportunities to new life as our mistakes are burned up in reconciliation. Even in nature, we see how death can turn back into life. The tragedy of loss in a wildfire soon yields to new growth in the forest. The annual decline in fall and death in winter leads us to new cycles of growth in spring and abundance in summer. So with this new mindset, Jesus is gently leading his fleeing disciples back to their true path to proclaim that Jesus is risen and that he continues to lead them on roads to life, both here on earth, but ultimately on that path that leads us to the eternal life. So Jesus changes loss and disappointment into successes and joy. His disciples are given new ears, eyes, hearts, and spirit to see Jesus as he truly is, that he is truly with us. Even as we live through this pandemic, as we live through closed churches, of not being able to avail ourselves readily of all the sacraments that we hold dear. We're called to be witnesses to a greater work, work that Jesus and all his followers are doing. We're called to proclaim that Easter joy to all that we meet, proclaim the Easter joy of resurrection. So in this time, lives are being reevaluated, and what is important is we shelter in place Relationships that have been left to languish or choked with the emotional undergrowth are now being cleansed by the sweeping fire of Jesus. The peace given to us is now being shared to others. And we see this in the care given by medical staff and by first responders, especially to those who are sick and dying away from family and from friends. In this time, we are called and we are witness the thinking of others, thinking of the, the common good and social distancing, thinking of others as we stay home and as we wear face masks in public. These are the roads we are being called to take back to our true mission. As we slow down, as we seek what is important in our lives, as we seek to heal the broken relationships, we come to recognize Jesus that he is in the middle of it all. From death to life, from grief to joy, from anxiety to peace, we are called to recognize that our hearts are on fire. We are called with that heart on fire to spread that resurrection, that Christ is risen, that Christ is with us, and that he will lead us back to the Father. So in these coming days, even as our faith life has turned upside down, where we are being denied receiving the body, blood, and soul and divinity of Christ, it is a time to give God thanks for the ease and for the accessibility that we have always had in receiving these sacraments. In this time of sheltering in place, of closed churches, let us unite ourselves to the many peoples throughout the world and throughout the centuries could only receive the sacraments infrequently due to wars, pandemics, epidemics, political oppression, and the lack of vocations. So during this time of anxiety, during this time of pandemic, the question is, how is Jesus speaking to you? Are you recognizing in this time 
that he is setting your heart on fire? Are you being called to recognize him in the people you are sheltering with? And do you recognize Jesus when you look in the mirror? So let us be like the many saints. Let us be like Thomas Edison, who in tragedy can say, Thank God we can start anew. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Let us stand as a people who proclaim that Easter joy with new eyes, with new ears, a new spirit, a new heart, as we proclaim our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The risen Lord appeared to his disciples on the road and revealed himself in the sharing of the scriptures and the breaking of the bread. Challenged to live with renewed hope, we pray. For all members of the church, may we be renewed in our desire to draw close to the risen Lord and to walk with him always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, that God will guide them in developing safe and prudent methods for the reopening of society as the pandemic wanes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the front lines of this pandemic, especially our health care workers and first responders, for all who are unable to stay at home but must work to provide for their families, May God protect them and keep them in good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all our St. Mary's parishioners and all who are in isolation, that we may find companionship with God through the scriptures and keep in mind with gratitude all who are significant in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those who are sick, that God's healing love will relieve their pain, strengthen their minds and bodies, and restore them to full health. We especially remember those with COVID-19, the names and intentions which have been placed in our book of the sick, for Ed Ross, for Kathy Crow, sister of Father Dan Fallon, and Betty Bruger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, May they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection, especially James McGrath, Sr., Hector Julio Fernandez, grandfather of Mirka Gallo, our youth minister, and for all those who have died from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Rosemary O'Neill, Marilyn McGannon, and for our parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered, for the prayers we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving Father, you gather us to 
together in faith and open our hearts to your truth. Make us strong in professing our faith in your desire to make all things new. May your Son always be present to us on our pilgrimage back to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. An integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples and saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. we are separated, we will say an act of spiritual communion, showing our unity. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs>
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may obtain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a few words, and again, uh, I thank everyone who has been volunteering their time or for prayers and concerns through the emails or phone calls to the Perry Center. Uh, myself and the staff appreciate all that. Also, in a way, special way to let you know that we continue to, as a group of volunteers, are making phone calls to parishioners, checking in on them as we are basically at a halfway point of this time of sheltering at home making sure everyone is still well taken care of. That if anybody has any needs, we are able to address them or at least get the proper people involved. So if you know of any neighbors, if you know of any fellow parishioners uh, that uh, we need to contact sooner than when we get, get to their name and their list, please let us know. We, you are our eyes, you are our ears, you are the, the hands and feet of Christ in our community. And so in many ways I say thank you for your prayers and concerns. And for those who have dropped off food for Father Tony and Father, Father, uh, Father Chris and myself, uh, we are not going hungry and we thank you for it. But again, just please know of our eternal gratitude. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow down your head for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.